So you've been asked to lead your congregation in prayer. Praying together is one of the most important things we do in a worship service. We say a prayer sometimes in the call to worship or sometimes during the offering, and sometimes we say a prayer in the benediction, but not always. The one time where we do pray together is in the congregational prayer. Some people call this prayer the prayers of the people. In some churches, this prayer may always be done by the pastor. In other churches, it's done by lay people. This communal prayer time is really important because prayers tell God about the heart of the congregation. It's also important because prayer is not just for God. Prayer is a type of formation. You are teaching people in the congregation how to pray when you pray. You are reminding them of the values of your congregation. Now, some people come from a tradition where they'll just get up and pray. God will lead me, right? And of course, God does lead us if we just get up and pray. In the Mennonite tradition I'm part of, congregational prayers are often written out ahead of time, or at least the worship leader goes up with some point form notes. It's easy to get nervous when you're speaking in front of people, and you can forget some important things that you wanted to pray about. Or sometimes when you pray just off the top of your head, your prayers sound the same every single time. In this video, I want to share about how I write a congregational prayer from my part of the Mennonite tradition. I think these tips can help you whether you write prayers out ahead of time or whether you pray extemporaneously. I like to think of the congregational prayer as having three parts that you can remember with the letters PRP. PRP, peeled red potatoes? No, praise, repentance, petition. Praise, repentance, petition, PRP. Let's start with praise. If there is one thing we should do together as a church, it's give thanks to God. Of course, by the time we do our congregational prayer, the church has probably been singing in the service and some of those songs will have had some praise in them. But the congregational prayer allows you to be more specific, to voice the, the thankfulness of the congregation. In my experience, most congregational prayers are short on praise and long on petition. When we give thanks to God, we're really training ourselves to pay attention to the gifts God gives us every day. What does your church have to be thankful for? By saying thank you, you're helping the congregation pay attention to all of the good things God is doing. If your congregational prayer is only about asking for this and asking for that, you're training people at home in their own prayers to just be asking, asking, asking. At home, do you want your congregation to skip over the praise part? I don't think so. We want to model that praise is a number one priority in our prayers to God. I like to start almost every congregational prayer with praise. I think the most effective praise prayers are very specific. I often try to include something from each of our senses in the thankfulness section. What have I seen or smelled or tasted or touched or heard this week that I'm thankful for? I might say, I might say thank you God for the crisp taste of apples, red and juicy, tangy on our tongues. I could have said simply, thank you God for food. But specific thankfulness prayers are an invitation for others to think about the wonderful things they've specifically experienced this week. What is it you are thankful for this week? The sound of the laughter of children? The aroma of coffee brewing in the morning? The taste of a juicy Bartlett pear? The feel of the warm sun through a cool fall breeze? The bright orange of pumpkins lined up on the side of the road? 
by choosing a few specific things to be thankful for. You are helping people picture things in your minds and be more concrete in their thankfulness. All right, PRP, praise, repentance, petition. Repentance is the next thing. This week didn't go perfectly. In fact, some people messed up in tragic ways this week. Our prayers have to reflect that fact. We say mean things or we do mean things to people. Sometimes the people we love the most. Sometimes we hurt ourselves. And then there's the many ways we participate in problems that are bigger than our own personal concerns, like systemic issues, poverty, racism, pollution. This part of the prayer time is our chance to level with God. It's not about trying to make everyone feel like a worm. It's simply saying all is not right on planet Earth and we could really use some help. If your congregational prayers never have repentance in them, what are you teaching people? That we're all perfect people and we don't have anything to be sorry about? Listing one or two ways we've fallen short this week is often enough. If you compile a big long list of sins, it will depress the heck out of everyone and mostly they will stop listening. Again, I think it's good to be specific. You could say, God, we've fallen short and we need your help. That's so bland, it's almost meaningless. Uh, you could be a bit more specific and say, we've fallen short and we need help with our families. It's a little bit better, but it doesn't really touch me. I can't really picture that. Think about your own life. Where have you messed up this week? How could you use that to help you craft a prayer for the whole congregation. I think of my life and I could say, some of us have had a hard time being part of a family this week. We've been irritated when people wanted attention and angry when people didn't give us the attention we needed. There are things we said that we wish we hadn't said and we were quiet when we should have said positive words. After we have a statement of repentance and a prayer, we can ask God to forgive us. But an important part of praying about repentance is also that we need to hear that God does forgive us, that there's some assurance. God loves us. God doesn't reject us. It's important to say, we thank you that you love us and that you forgive us, God. Or your mercy is never ending. In this section, I think it's also really important to say something like, give us the courage and grace to apologize to the people we've hurt or try to make things right. People sometimes forget this part in a prayer. They confess only to God. Including this in your prayer reminds us that even though God forgives us, we still need to do the hard work of repairing relationships. And this leads right into the next section of our congregational prayer. PRP, Praise, Repentance, Petition. Usually as a worship leader, you will be given some things that need to go in this part of the prayer. In my church, we often have a sharing time and I take a pen and paper up to write things down as people in the congregation go to the mic and say what they want prayed for. It is important in the congregation to pray for the needs of the people. Pray for those who are sick, pray for those who are grieving. Praying communally about hard things can be cathartic. It helps us release these things. We lay our worries and anxieties about someone before God. But our prayers should not be limited to what the congregation shares in an open sharing time. I think that it's important our petitions not just be about our own congregation and the people in it. Are we a church that cares about the congregation's community, about our world? If we are, 
our congregational prayer should reflect that. If you are leading a congregational prayer this week, you should be listening to the news or at least checking the headlines. Maybe you don't like to do that, but many people do. There may be a significant event that happened this week that everyone is thinking about it. An earthquake, a tragedy, a crime. Your prayer can voice a concern that many people in the congregation are carrying in a heavy way. Think about praying for the community that your church lives in. Think about what's happening there. Who is hurting? Pray for them. Now you could just say, God, we pray for people in our community who are hurting. Yes, you could, but could you be more specific? How about, God, we know that in the neighborhood of our church, there are lots of families having to choose whether to pay the rent or buy groceries. Help them and help us figure out how we can reach out to them. In the same way, when you pray for the world, you could say, Help refugees, God. Could we be more concrete? I think so. Today we pray for people making desperate journeys on open boats to find a safe country for their families. And we pray for all who are out on the sea right now, trying to help them. You can see that the second way of praying is more concrete. People can picture that. If you can picture it, it's easier for people to identify and relate to your prayer. Preparing a congregational prayer involves prayerful imagination where you spend time thinking about how you want God to intervene. That said, you have to be discerning in your congregational prayer. You can only choose a few things to pray about. You've probably all heard prayers where people prayed for too much. They list all the sorrows of the world. World hunger, armed conflict, racism, poverty, violence in the family, political corruption, environmental degradation. Eventually, your mind just switches off. You can't take in that much bad news in one prayer. God will be listening next week too. So just choose a few things to pray about that are on people's minds this week. Another tip is to not make your prayer too short. I've seen people lead congregational prayers that are just six lines long. Our community has had a lot of experiences this week. They come weighed down with pain or bubbling with joy. Are three sentences really enough? You spent 12 minutes in the congregational worship service on announcements. And are you only going to spend 40 seconds praying to the God who made us? I think if you spend time thinking about the people in the congregation you're praying with, and you spend time thinking about the world, you are not going to be short of things to pray about. Petition prayers can also sometimes include questions. When tragedy strikes and you don't understand something, you can ask, why has this happened, God? Refrain from answering your questions in your prayers. Just leave them open-ended. If you say, we know we will learn something from this dreadful event, it can sound too trite and it negates the power of that question that you gave. Or you might be giving an answer that the rest of the people in the congregation can't relate to. So you've worked on your prayer. You've wrote out your peeled red potatoes. No, your praise, repentance, petition. What next? I've got a rough draft of my prayer. I like to let it sit and come back to it. When I come back, I look at it to see, is there a theme there? Is there an image I can use to fit these elements together? Maybe it's the image of the wind with the Holy Spirit blowing through our lives. Or maybe it's the image of hope or the image of light. Is there a phrase from scripture or a hymn that I could use in my prayer to make it more impactful? I read through the prayer out loud. Does it flow? 
And does it feel to have a good balance in it? Have I put too much in it? Maybe there is something sketchy I need to fill out. As I read through it, I think about my language. Who is listening? I'm praying for children too. Will I be using big words that they won't understand? A verbal prayer works best with short sentences, with repeated elements, and with vivid words. It's good to check about how much religious language you're using. If we're heaping up flowery phrases, it can sound like religious cliches. I want my prayer to make sense to someone who is a newcomer to Christianity. I don't want to use coded language that will be meaningless to them. Praying on behalf of the congregation in worship is a type of service. I encourage you to pray about your prayer. Ask God to lead you as you make decisions about what to include. A thoughtful congregational prayer can be the highlight of the service for someone who needs to pray. It can express what they're feeling or thinking even if they haven't verbalized it yet. A prayer can help us be honest with God. A final tip. When I am actually delivering the prayer in front of the congregation, I want to be thoughtful about my tone of voice. Some people have a special praying voice. It's a very serious tone, as if they've done something wrong. They're talking to a parent who's mad at them. If you sound miserable talking to God, what does that teach people about our relationship to God? It should be our joy to talk to God, and I want my voice to reflect that. As I pray, I remember that God loves us and God wants to hear from us. So those are just a few thoughts I have about leading a congregational prayer. Remember, PRP, peeled red potatoes, praise, repentance, petition. Pray about praying and God will help you lead your congregation.